Okay, what's good everyone and welcome back to Thrown Away Rapid Fire. This is the segment where we ask our guests as many questions as we can in around five minutes. And for this very special episode of the series, we have someone very special on to join us today. He's been an incredible leader and shepherd for our city as a church for as long as I can remember, which is why I'm so excited to introduce Cardinal Thomas Collins. Thank you so much for joining us here on the next How's it going? Good to see you. Glad to be here. <laughs> Yeah, it's great to connect with you like this, even though we can't be in person. It's good to see you through Zoom, so thank you. We're virtual these days. Everything's virtual. Hope it's virtuous, too, but it's virtual. Everything's virtual. <laughs> nice. Virtuous and virtual. Awesome. Before we get into the questions, uh, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and who you are, for anyone who doesn't know? Okay, well, I am... Uh... My name is Thomas Collins. I'm the Archbishop here. Uh, I've been here for now. It's coming up to actually, it's tomorrow is my anniversary of 14 years. When I was installed 14 years ago as Archbishop of Toronto. Oh my gosh, the time goes fast. Congratulations. And, yeah. <laughs> I, I come from Guelph, Ontario. I was, a, I was ordained in 1973 as a priest. Um, and uh, so and I've been uh, all over the place. I taught in scripture in a seminary in London for a while, and then I was out in Alberta for 10 years. And then about 14 years ago, the Pope moved me here to Toronto. And so I've been uh, bishop here for all that time, and I love it. It's fun. That's awesome. So I'm excited to get into these questions then. So uh, okay. starting with the first question, your favorite book other than the Bible? <laughs> mm. Oh, I read, as you can see behind me, I read a lot of books. I, I could say my favorite book is I read one behind me, which is my doctoral dissertation on the apocalypse. But anyway, that's sort of the Bible. No, I, I know I love books. I've read them all my life. I think The Lord of the Rings, I certainly like. It's really wonderful. Uh, beautifully written, and it tells a lot about life. So I think I think it would be Lord of the Rings would be probably my, my favorite book, other than nice. the Bible. Yeah, nice. Good answer. Next question. One person that, if you had the opportunity to meet them from history, dead or alive, again, other than Jesus, who would you want to meet? Well, I wonder, you know, again, so many people. I think it would be a bishop called John Fisher, who was the bishop of a little diocese, the smallest diocese in England in the 1500s, the time of Henry VIII. He was a wonderful man. He was a, he was the only bishop who didn't cave in to, to the king when the king was trying to break up the church. And he was martyred. He, he was uh, martyred for that. And just before he died, he was made a cardinal by the pope, hoping that would maybe protect him. And instead, it just made the king more angry. I always think he's a great man. I'd love to meet him because he's he was a very quiet kind of guy, very strong in his faith. And, uh, and he had the integrity to stand up to the government and to do things at the time. And that's a challenge we face, a society that often kind of goes astray. So it's you just pray that he will guide us in that. So I think John Fisher would be the one. Bishop Fisher. Nice. That's awesome. Okay. Well, now, most rewarding aspect of being the Archbishop and the Cardinal these past now almost 14 years. <laughs> oh, my. I don't know. I just, um, I'm very happy being what I am, mainly being the Bishop of the Diocese. And I find it's... Um, Actually, you know, you know, working with the seminary, actually, I've, I've been involved in seminaries all my life as a priest. And I just do what I can to try to help the seminary just to be, be with the guys. And also working with, uh, uh, I, I like, uh, you know, meeting, going to schools, meeting people there. I, I just, meeting people, I think, is one of the things I, I enjoy doing. Although I'm a kind of a shy kind of guy, I'm not really an extrovert. But um, but I do a lot of things that I lately, uh, I found it very moving personally that every day, almost every day, except for two days, I'm celebrating Mass in the cathedral. It's being live streamed. And I'm finding that to be a real discipline spiritually in my life. So I find that element of being the bishop because I, I figure that I want to be sort of like Charles Borromeo, who's another one of my heroes. When they had the plague hit Milan in the 1570s or so, he was there in the midst of the plague and the pandemic of his day, trying to care for the people. So I find that to be kind of moving in my own heart as a, as a bishop, doing that. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Um, now, next question, uh, and this is especially relevant, I think, for people you know who might be feeling lost now, who might be, or even confused in their own faith journey. So for those who might be seeking God, where should they start? Well, I think especially these days, people, a lot of people are getting very stressed out. 
And often they're being pressured enormously, like losing their jobs or having, or, or sick, or knowing someone who's very sick, and, and they can't get to them because there are all these, this social distancing is horrible, you know, this physical distancing. I always like to say physical distancing. We're never supposed to be socially distant. Right. But we can, we may have to be physically distant like we are right now, you know, physically, but it's, uh, so I think that's a great stress on people. But I think where we find God is always in, in prayer. Um, but I think one of the really good ways to do it uh, is just to take um, a Bible, a little Bible, uh, and read a gospel. Uh, just read a gospel. I, what I'm trying to do lately, I've just, I do it in different ways all my life, you know. But what I've been doing is I, I try to spend about 30 minutes reading the Bible. Just no study, read the Bible. And so I spend the first, read a couple of chapters of a gospel. I just keep going around and around the gospels. And then uh, the, the next, you know, 20 minutes or so, I just read first, I go right through a New Testament book, then an Old Testament one, then a New Testament, an Old Testament. So I read two books. And I think that's the way in the Word of God you find that. And I think especially too, if you have a chance, which we do have the churches open for this, uh, but especially it should be better in the future, uh, to spend time before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. That's really important. Uh, and, um, you know, Bishop Sheen is kind of my hero, and I, I, I've been trying every day to spend an hour, make it a holy hour every day. And I find that to be really valuable. And when I'm doing it, I'm doing what well, that's the time when I do my reading of the scriptures too. And then these days I have to do the reading of the, the mass of the day, whatever the readings are. And also I think the sacrament of confession is a beautiful way to get to know God. Because we get all clogged up with all of our sins and stuff, and it just kind of gets grungy and clogged. And so we need to get to refreshed regularly and do an oil, get an oil change from time to time. So we do that. And I think that's really important. So those are ways. It's just the mass, the sacraments, word of God, and the sacraments. I remember when I became a bishop now, oh, what was it, 20, 20 what is it, 24 years ago now? Oh my gosh. Um, you get to pick a little model, say a little golden cross on a red background. And then Alpha Omega, the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet in the Apocalypse, that's Jesus Christ, Jesus the Lord, and then a Bible and a chalice in word and sacrament. I think that sums it up, Jesus Christ in word and sacrament. I think that's how we get to know God a bit, you know, just slowly, day by day. It takes time, a lifetime, you know? Right. So true. And, uh, okay, last question. Um, since yeah. 1973, you've been a priest now. That's crazy. Can you share any experience or story or memory where you experienced God's power? Well, I I certainly, I remember the day I was ordained a priest. I was the only one ordained that year for my diocese. So I'm glad they went ahead with the ordination, even just for one. So I, I'm glad they did. Um, I find, I found, I find a special experience of God when I'm ordaining someone either as a deacon, a priest, or just a few days ago as a bishop. I find it awesome, like majestic, and uh, preparing for it spiritually, and then just, and I put my hands upon someone, and that person becomes forever, you know, a deacon, a priest, or a bishop. Um, I just find it awesome. And it just, I, I am amazed, you know, and, and it makes me think of my own life, you know, think of, of how I'm, my own responsibility, my own mission as a bishop, and I, I pray the Lord to help me to be faithful in that. But that's why I think it's always good for us to go back to the sacraments, like to go to baptisms and confirmations and ordinations, or uh, for those who are married, to go to a marriage, a wedding. Um, and uh, I'm always glad to do a wedding too, preside over that. Uh, and, uh, and also uh, in religious profession, all these sacraments of commitment, um, they help us, even if it's a different commitment to someone else's life to our own, they help us go deeper and realize, think of the words of the sacrament. They make us reflect on our own life and what God calls us to do. So I find that's a awesome moment. But most of life is not awesome. Most of life is, we don't live on the mountaintops, we live in the valley. And so I think that too, it's just a steady, steady. Um, that's why I think the sacred heart of Jesus is a very important symbol in our faith because the heart is not visible and the heart is steady and it gives us life.
And that's what uh, when we think of the compassion of Christ. And that's what I want. I'm going to be. I think I'm going to write in preparation for this coming June, where June the 11th is the feast, the Sunday of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So I'm going to write a little pastoral letter meditating upon that, because that steady, faithful love of Christ is, I think, what we should all be thinking about all our life. Not spectacular. Like when our heart gets exciting, we're having heart attacks. We don't want that. It's more of the steadiness day by day. I think that's the way we get closest to God. Beautiful words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Your Eminence. That's all our questions. Um, yeah, this is the final uh, special episode. So it's a great way to end uh, with, with your presence. Thank you so much. I know you're super busy. Um, and yeah, with the bishop's ordination, this literally this week. So oh, nice. Yeah. Many amazing things happening still. So uh, thank you so much. And if you could end us off with a blessing for, for the sure. great. Okay, may the Lord bless everyone and draw closer to Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.